ONDC's entry caused a disruption in the food delivery space. Everyone's been talking about ONDC, that's a central government-backed open network for digital commerce. ONDC could potentially be the next big thing for food delivery. And will that actually be a game-changer in the whole e-commerce system country? Hello everyone, in today's time, ONDC is the hottest topic that everyone is discussing. And in this video, we are going to talk about what ONDC is and how it is going to affect e-commerce or delivery market. So let's start with a basic question, what is ONDC? ONDC is an initiative led by government where buyers, sellers, logistic providers, payment gateways and others come together to do a business. So basically, it's not just an app which you can go and download from Play Store. It's a whole network that aims to create an open and interoperable network where businesses of all sizes can thrive and consumers can have seamless shopping experience across all platforms. But the question here is we already have so many e-commerce websites like Swiggy, Zomato, Amazon, Flipkart. Then what is the problem ONDC is trying to solve? Number one is monopoly of big players. The e-commerce industry has already witnessed the dominance of major players like Flipkart and Amazon. This leads to limited competition and potentially anti-competitive practices. We all know these apps use customer data. So let's take an example of delivery application first. Many restaurants were claiming that these applications were using their data and helping restaurants that are giving them high commission. The National Restaurant Association of India or the NRAI has been having a bit of a conflict with online platforms Swiggy and Zomato for a while now with a number of issues including discounting and a number of issues around data. We don't know the truth but there is a possibility. On the other hand, if we talk about Amazon, there are a lot of charges already against them. Amazon is under investigation in the United States, Europe and India for alleged anti-competitive practices that hurt other businesses. Amazon.com has repeatedly been accused of knocking off the products of sellers in its marketplace and rigging search results and exploitation of its vast trove of data to promote its own merchandise at the expense of other sellers. Let me give you a simple example. If you are selling a washing machine with some new and unique features, you will see after a while there will be other brands like Amazon Basics that will be selling the same features and will be listing on top of you. This is going to run small sellers and they can't compete against big players like Amazon. So here ONDC aims to foster healthy competition by providing a level playing field for businesses. It encourages a diverse range of sellers and service provider preventing monopolistic practices and promoting a fair marketplace. Second one is innovation and collaboration. The current digital market landscape may lack vibrant ecosystem for innovation and collaboration. ONDC seeks to change this by opening open APIs and standardizing the protocols. These measures simplify the development of new services, tool and application, fostering innovation and enabling businesses to create value-added solution for consumer. Third one is very important, that is data empowerment. We all know these apps are using customers' data for their own benefits. However, ONDC promotes data empowerment by giving individuals and businesses control over their own data. It ensures transparency, consent-based data sharing, enhanced privacy, fostering trust among users, and supporting responsible data usage. Till now, we have understood what problem ONDC is planning to solve and what ONDC is. So now, let's understand how it works. To take a better understanding of this, we need to take a step back and first understand how UPI works. In case of UPI, if a person is sending money to another person, the person who is sending money can have different bank account and can use different application through which he is sending money. Similarly, the person who is on the other hand can have different bank accounts and can use the different applications also. But they are still able to send and receive money with the help of UPI. This is very similar to how ONDC works. Users and sellers can have different applications, but they still will be able to do transactions with each other. Let's understand this better with the help of an example. Let's say if a buyer wishes to buy a smartphone, they will search on an existing e-commerce application available like Amazon or Flipkart. 
the buyer would have to surf individual apps to find a better deal and this is time consuming so ondc provides a solution for this problem suppose a buyer uses ondc to open any one of the existing e-commerce application in that case the buyer will get the listing of sellers within amazon app and the options from flipkart other stores and other apps that are registered on ondc did you remember this ad from Trivago? Trivago does the work for you and instantly compares more than 600,000 hotels for more than 200 different websites. Similar to what ONDC does with online shopping, it gives buyer the opportunity to compare prices, discount and quality. It also gives flexibility to buyer and seller to choose delivery agents from other apps if the selected app's delivery agent is unavailable to provide delivery service. Till now, everything seems look good, right? But there are also some challenges that ONDC has to face, which can impact its operations. Number one is implementation complexity. Implementing a complex initiative like ONDC involves significant technological and regulatory challenges. Ensuring seamless integration, data security, and addressing the diverse need of different stakeholders' requirement needs careful planning and execution. Second one is market consolidation. While ONDC aims to promote competition, there is a possibility that it could lead to market consolidation. Large players might leverage their resources and infrastructure to dominate the market, potentially limiting the opportunities for small businesses. Third one is user adoption. We already know there are a lot of players available in the market. So shifting to a new framework always comes with a learning curve. Users' adoption and acceptance of ONDC will be crucial for its success. Educating users, resolving any usability issues, and addressing concerns related to data privacy and security will be important factor to consider here. Overall, ONDC has the potential to be a game changer for Indian e-commerce market. However, there are also some potential drawbacks that need to be considered. Only time will tell you whether ONDC will be a success or not. But till then, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. See you in next video. Bye.